Welcome back everyone to Pontus Fathom Hobbies. This is Season 2, Episode 1 of Viking Gods, and we are playing a Asgardians versus the Celestials. So we're going to jump right into Round 1. If you haven't seen the setup, you can go check it out. It's basically Asgardian Gods versus Marvel Celestials. I've got some custom pieces on the board, and we're going to jump right into it. Before we do, quick shout out to our channel sponsor, Pontus Fathom Press. Three volume set of Disclosure from the Necronomicon Fragment, newly released Alchemy of Azathoth finishes off the series. These books are all standalone, so you can check out Alchemy of Azathoth, Necromancy of Nyarlathotep, Hermeticism of Hastor, kind of uh, indicating the uh, key Cthulhu deity that they're talking about. So if you have a, a favorite one, you can jump in on that one, collect them all. Uh, you can check out our other bookstore uh, offerings on the link to the bookstore below. Lots of books out there uh, to interest you. There's also a Patreon that we have. We've been posting updates to some behind the scenes and inside baseball to the channel. Go check that out. Helps to support the channel for as little as a dollar. And uh, we really appreciate that. And as usual, if you like and subscribe, um, helps to get the al YouTube algorithm um, communicating with the mothership uh, and passing Arshim's judgment to let us let the earth live one more day. So thanks a lot for your support. Let's jump into turn number one. So we'll start out with, uh, we've got to move the celestials off the board. So we'll go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, one. And basically there's no attack right away. So, uh, so we can uh, start with that. Uh, because all of these other forces are actually the enemies of these Celestials. So there's no attack for these guys, so we'll just move right into the phase for uh, the Asgardians. So let's go ahead and move... Let's move the Unimine and Heimdall and the Destroyer down to fight Arshim. So I think that the win conditions for this game is we have to destroy all the Celestials. And the win condition for them is if they destroy the Drizzle or if they destroy all of our pieces, then they win. So let's see if they can do it. We'll also move these guys um, down. One, two. Just going to slide them all down this way. I had to draw this small board. I was talking before about... Uh, I lost the original board to this game. 1982, 92, 02. It's 30 years old, this game, so. Uh, let's move the Frost Giants down, one, two, one, two. Yeah, so instead of trying to find another one, I just went ahead and printed it out, and then I lost the printed out version. So you see that the one that looks like the real board is one that I printed and I had laminated. Um, and, the, and that was the result of that. So then we're gonna start moving these guys across too. Let's have one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 two, one, one, two, one, 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 one. And I've had Dwalvin go up with the dwarves. Uh, let's leave the tree as it is for now. We'll just move everybody one forward here. Uh, Freck and Greer can teleport up to five, so let's have them join Odin and Thor down here. And Uller can, can shoot from two distance away his bow, as can the stone giants. So, so once again, we don't have um, many people to attack here, but we do have Heimdall, the Unimind, and the Destroyer all focused on Arshim. So that's going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, plus seven is 16. So that's five or more, or six, no, sorry, nine minus 16. Yeah, it's five plus five. So I think Arshim is going out this round. So let's see. Sick. Oh, wow. Wow. Defender retreats. So Arshim gets to sneak out of this attack. He is able to save his life. So, uh,. So that's going to do it there. So yeah, so basically, the uh, I'll just show you quickly in the rules here. Basically, the way the combat works is 
you see five or more, it's defender dies on a one through five. We got a six, which is defender retreats. So Arsham was the defender. He retreats here. And, and basically, you can mix up the fighting where it's just one-on-one. -on -one. You can do one-on-one, -on -one, or you can have all of the, all of the people uh, attacking the same person. So in this case, you could see it's Odin and Sif. Odin and Sif could both fight Fenris. Odin can just fight Sif, Fenris, or Sif can fight Thrym, something like that, or Odin and Sif can fight Thrym. So it's it's up to you how you want to divide up the, uh, let's call like the ganging up on one piece. But I think that's a good strategy, especially because these characters are quite powerful. So uh, so cool. So then let's go into the next phase is to have um, Hela move, and we'll go into the Hela mechanic. So Hela is, um, and we'll read Hela quickly here. Hela is the uh, half black, half white goddess ruled over the dead in the, her underworld ki underworld kingdom of Niflheim. Niflheim. In some accounts of Ragnarok, Hela sides with the forces of chaos. So the advanced game, she is controlled by the chaos player. So in this case, uh, Hela and the chaos player and Asgardian player, we're all on the same side. We're against the celestials. So basically, she can um, roll the Hela mechanism she automatically destroys anything that she's next to. And so this is how the die roll goes. So if you roll the six-sided dice, one, two, three, four, five, six, clockwise around, Hela, the goddess of death, moves three spaces on her turn. On the map, each direction is given a number. For Hela's move, one player rolls the die and moves Hela one space in the direction shown on the die roll. The die is rolled again, and Hela is moved one space in that direction. The die is rolled the third time, and Hela is moved in her final space. Okay, so... Uh, so sometimes she may backtrack, and any time Hela moves next to a piece, it is immediately claimed for her underworld kingdom and removed from play for the rest of the game. The only exceptions are Loki and the Tree of Life. They are not affected by Hela. So here's our Tree of Life in the corner. You drizzle. Maybe I'll zoom in here so you guys can see this a little better. All right, so let's, let's zoom in, and maybe I'll show you Yggdrasil. It's, it's a drawn one. I lost the original piece, so I just kind of redrew the Tree of Life here. Kind of see it. It does not have an attack, but it has a defense of four. And Hela, she doesn't really attack, so she doesn't have an attack number. She's just um, this sort of force. So let's go ahead and give her get her rolls done. So her first roll is a four. So if we go to the chart here, uh, four is one, two, three, four, it's this way. So Hella moves this way. We want to try to move her down toward uh, down toward the, the Celestials. Uh, next she gets a one. So she moves back up to the one. Because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then lastly she gets a three. And three is back down this way, okay? So that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up for Hella's move. Okay, and then the last function here is the uh, Bifrost Bridge. On the day of Ragnarok, the Rainbow Bridge was will be destroyed by the weight of the monsters and giants who cross it. So in our game, it's not the monsters and giants crossing; it's the Celestials crossing. So, so we'll just say that at the end of each game turn, uh, the Celestial player must cover two spaces of the Rainbow Bridge with the black void marker. When all the bridge spaces are covered, the bridge has completely collapsed and its spaces are counted as void for the rest of the game. Any forces, let's say, of the Celestials that are still stuck on the Rainbow Bridge will be destroyed as it crumbles beneath them. Okay, so... Let's put the two, let's just grab two tokens here, place them on the on the rainbow bridge. Start, so it's starting to crumble under the weight of the celestials. And that's gonna that's gonna do it for uh, round one, number one. So guys, thanks for watching. Um, click ahead to the video to uh, uh, turn number two. And um, uh, you can, if you're watching this uh, past when I first upload it, you can go and watch the playlist actually and just watch through all the videos. So all, by the way, all of our videos do have a playlist, but I usually upload the videos the first run on a daily basis. So if, if you if you get to the playlist and you're, you're, you're playing along and, and the video doesn't come after one or two turns, that probably means this is the most recent video that I'm uploading. So uh, 
uh, eventually the playlist will have all of them in once they're published. So just bear with that, okay? All right, guys, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you in turn two and talk to you later. Bye-bye.